We're going to sketch the proof of the following theorem. If a linear programming problem has an optimal solution and its feasible region has an extreme point, then it has an optimal solution that is an extreme point. So this theorem confirms what you might have noticed already. If you solve a linear programming problem graphically, you often see optimal solutions that are corners. So let's get to the proof. First of all, we may assume without loss of generality that the linear programming problem is of the following form. Minimize C transpose X subject to A1 transpose X greater than equal to B1 up to AM transpose X greater than equal to BM where X is X1 up to XN. So there are M constraints and N variables. Now, typically, a linear programming problem might have less than or equal to constraint and equality constraints. But less than or equal to can be turned into greater than or equal to inequality just by multiplying both sides by minus 1. And if you have an equality, you can write it as a pair of inequalities. And for a maximization problem, it's equivalent to minimizing the negative of the objective function. So doing these transformations will not change the set of feasible solutions and definitely will not change the optimal solutions. So we may assume that we are working with this sort of problem. Now let's take an optimal solution that satisfies a special property. So we are picking an optimal solution x star such that the set of indices i, a i transpose x star equal to b i is as large as possible. In other words, x star is an optimal solution that satisfy as many constraints with equality as possible. Let A bar be the matrix whose rows comprise of AI transpose where I is indexed by the elements in E. If the rank of A bar is equal to N, then we know from a theorem characterizing extreme points that we have seen in a previous video will tell us that X star is an extreme point and we are done. The remaining case is what if A bar has rank less than N? And this is where we need to do some work. So suppose that rank of A bar is less than N. In that case, that means the nullity of A bar is non-zero. So there exists D in Rn, D not equal to zero, such that A bar times D is zero. Now we look at two cases. The first case is when C transpose D is non-zero. The second case, which we'll consider later, is C transpose D equal to zero. So let's consider the case when C transpose D is not equal to zero. Well, without loss of generality, assume that this is in fact negative. Because if it's not negative, we can take minus D in place of D. And minus D will still satisfy the condition up here is still non-zero, and A bar minus D is also zero. Now, note that for all I in E, A I transpose times X star plus epsilon times D, D is simply, well, A I transpose X star is B I, and A I transpose times epsilon D is zero, because A bar times D is zero, so A I transpose D is zero because AI transpose is one of the rows in A bar. And this is going to be true for all epsilon. Now for each I not in E, we know that AI transpose X star is greater than BI. So for a sufficiently small epsilon, we will have AI transpose X star plus epsilon D greater than bi. And so we have constructed a point x star plus epsilon d, so using this sufficiently small epsilon, that still satisfy all the constraints, so it's a feasible solution, hence x star plus epsilon d is a feasible solution whose objective function value is c transpose x star plus epsilon c transpose d. But epsilon is positive and c transpose d is assumed to be negative. 
So this is strictly less than C transpose X star. But C transpose X star is the optimal value. So this is impossible. We have found a feasible solution with an objective function value less than the optimal value. So this is a contradiction. So this case is not possible. All right. So let's consider the second case when C transpose D is zero. First, observe that there must be an i not in E such that a i transpose d is not equal to zero. And this is where we use the fact that the feasible region has an extreme point. Well, if a i transpose d is equal to zero for all i in E, well, then that means d is in the null space of the matrix a1 transpose up to a m transpose, which is a contradiction. And like before, we're going to assume that a i transpose d less than zero for some i in E. E. Now, we are going to move away from x star and control a new point that contradicts our assumption of x star. And before we do that, let's see what this is saying. I have my optimal solution x star. It has a number of inequalities that it is satisfied with equality. For example, it might satisfy something like this. But now, there are the inequalities that it does not satisfy with equality. And this D is saying that, well, there's a direction that we can move from X star to hit another inequality. And so using this observation, the fact that AI transpose D is less than zero for some I in, from, from, for some I not in E, okay, so this would be not in E, there exists epsilon positive such that X star plus epsilon D is a feasible solution and AI transpose X star plus epsilon D is equal to BI for some I not in E. So how large can epsilon be? Well, we start from X star, gradually increase epsilon, and the moment that we hit another inequality, we'll stop. So that way we we'll get a point that is still a feasible solution. But this time, there will be an inequality that is satisfied with equality at this new point. But what we have done here is we have constructed a point uh, that has objective function value same as x star. Note that C transpose x star plus epsilon d is equal to C transpose x star because C transpose d is zero. So x star plus epsilon d is an optimal solution, but it satisfies at least one more inequality with equality than x star, contradicting our choice of x star. So what that means is, the second case, C transpose d, is not possible. And this means that the matrix A bar that we have formed earlier cannot have rank less than n. And so it must have rank n, and so x star must be an extreme point. And that completes the proof of the theorem.